All right, so our website is still looking a little bit sparse. And in fact, it's looking nothing like this, is it? But we're going to change that very, very quickly. Let's go ahead and add the rest of the content in order to have all the images that we need for our top section. Now in this lesson, if you look at the resources, you'll find a zip file that you can download. And once you extract that zip file, you should now have a folder called CSS My Site Images. Now, if you double click on this folder, you'll see two images. One is a cloud and another is a mountain. And we're going to try and recreate the scene that they've got over here. So let's go ahead and add those images to our project folder. So if you pull up Atom, and find your project folder, then we're going to go and create a new folder in here called images. And inside this images folder is where we're going to drag and drop those two PNGs, the cloud and the mountain. So we're going to put it inside here so that we can use it inside our website. So now we're going to go ahead and add our images so that we have a image of a cloud at the top of our top container. So the source will be images slash cloud dot PNG. And the alt text will just be cloud image. And we're going to have another cloud below this paragraph tag. And finally, we're going to have an image of our mountain right at the bottom. So that will be images slash mountain dot PNG. And the alt text will just be mountain image. All right, let's hit save and let's refresh to see what our page looks like right now. Now, it looks a little bit weird, right? Why is it that this cloud is taking up its own line and it's not next to either this heading or this paragraph tag, but this cloud is on the same line and next to this mountain image? What is going on here? Well, to understand this, we have to look at the CSS display property. Now, the display property has four different values, and we're going to look at them in turn and see what each one of these does. Now, if we switch on pesticide again, you can see that the box around the cloud is only as large as the image, as is the box around the mountain and this cloud. But the box around the H1 and also the paragraph element, they're as long as the width of the page. So what's going on here? Well, by default, some elements are what's called block display. For example, this H1 and this paragraph tag. And block elements are those that take up essentially the whole width of the screen on a web page. So effectively, blocking out any other elements from sitting next to it on the left or on the right. Now, the most common block elements that we would have seen already are our paragraphs, our headers, so H1 through to H6, our divs, our lists and list items, as well as forms. And if we head over to code pen, and I'm just going to create a new anonymous pen. Let me just get rid of the JS editor and I'm going to have my view with my editors on the right. So now I'm going to go ahead and create two block elements. So we know that paragraphs are block elements. So let's create a paragraph called hello, another one called world. Now, if I select the paragraph tag in my CSS and I give them both a background color of say red, then you can see that the entire paragraph takes up the whole width of the web page. So it's blocking any other element from being on the same line next to it on the right or on the left. Now here's a related problem. Say if I wanted to look at this paragraph tag, which we now know to be a block element. What if I wanted to style the pro part of it differently from the rest of the words in this paragraph tag. How can I only target one part of this paragraph tag? How can I say, for example, underline the word pro so that it says a programmer, but style these three characters differently? Well, some of you might think that I could just split up this sentence into three paragraph tags. So what if it was a plus a 
space, then it was pro, and then it was grammar, a programmer. So now I've got this separate paragraph tag for the word pro, and I can give it a class of, say, just the word pro, and I can go into styles and style it differently from the others. So I can say dot pro, and this one, if you do a little bit of research on Google, you'll find that in order to make it underlined, you just have to change the text decoration to underline. Now, what happens in this case? Let's check it out. You can see that because the paragraph element are blocking elements, they take up the entire width and they block everything else from being on the same line as themselves. This doesn't actually work. Even though we've been able to target just one part of that line, we can't have it looking like this. So let me show you the solution. Instead of having three paragraph tags, so let's just undo this to where we were before. We've got a single paragraph element. What we can do is we can use another HTML element called a span. And inside the span, we can add that word pro and we can give that span a class of pro. And because we've already selected that class in CSS and we're making that part underlined, then that is going to be applied to the word in this span. Now, if we hit save and we refresh, you can see that we've achieved what we set out to do. And this sentence is still on the same line. Now, why is that? If we switch on pesticide once more and I hold down the control key, you can see that over here, I'm hovering over the entire paragraph element, but one part of it has a span and this allows us to select almost like as if you would highlight a section of your text. Just select one part of the text in order to format it or style it differently. Now, the reason why I'm showing you this here instead of inside the HTML module is because spans like divs don't do very much unless they're used in conjunction with CSS. But another reason why I'm showing it to you now is because the span element is what's known as an inline display element. So unlike block display elements, for example, the heading and also the paragraph element, a inline display element only takes up as much space as it needs to in the height and in its width. So you can see that the box around the span is only as large as it needs to be, as is the box around our cloud and also our mountain. So some of the common inline elements that you're gonna come across are things like spans, image elements, and also your anchor tags. If you think back to our CV website that we created in our HTML module, the links for our hobbies website and our contact me website, they show up next to each other. And this is because they are inline elements and they do not block other elements from occurring on the same line. In fact, they encourage them to. And so this is why they're called inline elements. Now, if we head back into our code pen and we create another span. Now, while you can have spans that are nested inside paragraph tags or H1s or whatever else it may be, you can also have them as standalones. But you can see here, if we select our span element and we also give it a background color, then you can see that these elements are in line. And even if we had a whole bunch more of these spans, they would continue to be stacked onto the same line until we run out of space horizontally. Now, you might wonder, why would we ever use block elements if we can simply use inline elements? Surely it seems far more flexible. Well, there's just one problem. With inline elements, you can't actually change the width. So if I said the width of all the spans should be 100 pixels, you can see that absolutely nothing happens. But if I specify a width, the same width, 
to our block elements, then you can see that it complies very eagerly. But it still doesn't let any other element sit on the same line. So what can you do? Well, you can actually change the display property of any given element. So I can make a paragraph element, which we know is by default a block element. I can change its display value to inline. And that makes all of our paragraphs inline elements and allows everything to sit next to each other on the same line. But you can see we've just lost the ability to change its width. Now, similarly, I can change the display property of our inline elements to block elements. And this allows me to change its width, but it doesn't let them sit on the same line. So what should I do if I wanted elements that can occupy the same line, but at the same time I can set their widths? Which one should I choose then? Well, you don't actually have to choose because there is another type of display, which is called the inline block. And this kind of gives you the best of both worlds. So if instead of changing the paragraph element to inline, I'm going to change it to inline dash block, then you'll see that not only am I allowed to change its width, you can see that it's now 100 pixels wide, but I'm also able to make them go onto the same line. So act almost like inline elements. And this is kind of what image elements are like by default. Now, I say kind of because, as always, reality is much more complex than that. But if you're interested, I'll provide a link to more discussion around this. But for our purposes, we're just going to treat images as if they are inline block elements because we're able to change its width and height to whatever it is that we desire. And they also get displayed as if they're inline elements next to each other. So we've now covered three out of the four display values that we have access to. The last one is simply display none, and that just gets rid of our element. So let's head back into our code pen, and I'm going to give our second paragraph element a separate class. I'm going to call this second P, and I'm going to target it down here, dot second P, and I'm going to set its display value to none. And you can see what that does is that it simply removes that element from the website as if it didn't exist. So if I get rid of this display block and allow our spans to continue being inline elements, you can see that there's no gap between the first hello and the second hello. That world paragraph has now completely disappeared out of the flow of the document as if it never was written inside the code. It's almost like I've just gone ahead and deleted it from the HTML. But of course I haven't. And all that I've done is just set its display value to none. Now, when you're trying to figure out how to hide things on your web page, for example, if you had a quiz, then you might want to hide and show the answer. There's two ways that you can do this. One is display none, as you've seen here, which takes that element out of the flow and it's as if it never existed. The other one is a property called visibility. And this you can set to hidden. And what this does is that it makes that element disappear, but it keeps its original position and all the other elements still flow around it as if it's still there. It just can't be seen anymore. So whenever you're trying to make things disappear or reappear, think about what effect you want to have and choose between these two properties. So as we've seen in this lesson, the position of elements on screen are determined by many things. The box model, the margins, the size of the border, the size of the width and the height of the actual element, whether if it's display block or whether if it's display in line, whether if we're allowed to set its width or if we're not. But even before CSS comes into play, you have to remember that there's already rules 
that govern how your HTML elements should be displayed on screen. So to learn about that and to learn more about CSS positioning, I'll see you on the next lesson.